Let's do one last thing with version control. It's often skipped over in introductory tutorials, but I think it's really important for doing good science. We'll start by editing count.shell one more time. I'm going to add another comment line. It will look like garbage. You'll see its utility in a minute. Dollar revision colon dollar. The string is important. It can be in a comment, it can be in a string variable. All that matters is that it's dollar sign and the word revision with a capital R, colon, and then a dollar. So let's save that and exit. All right, the only difference is that I've added that line. Now, subversion, I want to set the property keywords to be revision on the file count.shell. Subversion keeps track of properties for files. It is actually managing a small database of information about the file. Here, I'm telling it to go and add a property to that database. The property is keywords, SVN colon keywords, and the keyword I want it to remember for count.shell is revision. All right, subversion, what's the status? Well, now you see a double M. The first M means the file itself has been modified. That was this line when I added dollar revision colon dollar. The second M, this one here, means that the properties have been modified. And that's the result of doing SVN prop set. Why am I doing all of this? Well, there's my file. So version commit, adding revision property to script. The change is committed. Now notice that before the commit, the line was just dollar revision colon dollar. Now, the line is dollar revision colon seven dollar. Once you've set the keyword revision, every time you commit a change, Subversion looks for the string dollar revision colon and then fills in the revision number before the next dollar sign. It's keeping track of the revision inside the file itself. So if I mail this file off to John von Neumann, he not only gets the file, he gets inside the file automatically and correctly, which version of the file is this? Okay, this is pretty useful. Because now, if I send you a file, and you're running it on your data, and I'm running it on my data, and we're getting different answers, we can check inside the files and say, no, which version are you actually running? Ideally, you would just check it out of version control. But if for any reason I've had to mail you the file, you don't have action to the ver access to the version control repository, for example, you still know which version it is. That's not the most important use. Let's do this. Instead of making this a comment, I'm going to say echo that string. Remember, echo prints its arguments. So let's save that and exit. Now when I run, it says, here's the date on which you ran the program, and here's the revision of the program. And that's in my output. So if I do this and say species count dot dat, species count dot dat, my results file, now tells me when was it created and with what revision of the program. Now it's still not saying which program, so let's fix that. Let's go in and change this from revision to ID. SVN prop set, SVN keywords ID on count.shell, SVN commit, switching to ID property and echoing it to output. The ID property tells me what file this is, what revision it is, when the last change was made, and by whom. It's all of the information. So now, when I run this, it says, on this day, I ran this program, this revision, that was last modified at this time by this person. All right, this is useful information. The technical term is provenance, which is spelled like that. In something like archaeology, 
The provenance of an item is the record of where it was found, how it was cleaned, when it was stored, where it was stored, who processed it, how and where. Where was it sold? What museum got it next? It allows you to trace backward through the object's history to the point of origin. In art, the provenance of a piece of work is that same paper trail. Receipts, bills of lading for transportation, records of cleaning. If you want to establish that this really is a Rembrandt, what you want is the provenance. You want that history. The most important use these days is probably in forensics. If you want to introduce a piece of physical evidence into a court in most countries, you're supposed to provide its provenance. It was found on the scene by this police officer. Here's the photograph of it on the scene. It was then bagged and transported to here. It was stored here. It was moved here. You've got an unbroken trail so that you can trace the object back through its paperwork to where it was found. The hope is that it prevents fraud, that it prevents people finding a useful piece of evidence weeks or months after the scene. Scientists are supposed to have provenance for their results. If I show you some sort of new drug, I should be able to trace back and say, here's how it was synthesized. Here's where I got my samples. Here's how they were processed, by what machines, with what settings, with what reagents. Here's how you can trace through to recreate this drug, this material. Here's when the data was collected by the Hubble, here's how it was pre-processed, here's what other things were done to it before I started to do my analysis. Maintaining that kind of traceability by hand is painful and error prone. It's a lot of work, records get lost, people mistype things, and it's just, it's too hard. People don't do it. But the computer can do it for you. If I now run this, My data file can tell me who created me. And this can save you a world of pain. Some of you I know will already have defended a thesis. Here's the recurring nightmare that I had in the run-up to my defense. For several weeks, I woke up in the middle of the night over and over again, dreaming that in my thesis defense, one of the professors would say, well, this is all very good, Mr. Wilson, but let's turn to page 87 where you have this graph Nice rising toward the asymptote curve with a little bit of bumpiness so it doesn't look artificial. There's a workstation over there in the corner. Can you just log in, run your simulator, and show us that you can reproduce that graph? Show us that this is actually what you got from your program. I had no idea how I'd produce that graph. A year before my defense, I'd been running this program. It had produced something that I thought was a really good example. I'd saved the postscript of the graph, and then I kept hacking on the program. So the program I actually had on the day of my defense was a descendant of the one I'd used, but I didn't really know what parameters I'd used. I knew some of them, but not all of them. I certainly didn't know exactly what the code had been doing then. It had been a year. I couldn't reproduce my own results. And a study done by a bunch of people working in computational economics found that at least in their field, the half-life for reproducibility, the, the period at which only half of people could reproduce their own results, was six months. Six months after submitting a paper, only half of people could exactly reproduce their own graphs and tables. That's not science. It's, it's not what we expect from physical experiments. We shouldn't accept it from computational experiments, particularly if getting the computer to keep records for us is this easy. Now, once I've got results like this, I can save this file, and later, a year later, when I get results that are different, I can come back and say, okay, this one looks strange now. It didn't look strange at the time, but six months or a year down the road, when I've done more processing, I come back and I look and I say, no, that can't be right. I don't have to guess how I produced this. The data file itself is telling me how it was produced. I can do even better. Let us go into the data directory. And add that to each of our files. We're going to add a comment 
of the form dollar revision colon dollar. I'm using hash as a comment marker. Every file format allows comments of some kind. So all four files have been changed. SVN diff shows me, yep, every single file has got that line added. SVN prop set, SVN keywords, revision on star.txt, SVN commit, adding revision numbers to data files. So now my data files have their revision numbers. Oops, what did I do wrong? I misspelled revision. Oh, revision, I'm sorry. Sorry. You can tell I'm flustered now. Okay, this time it just commits the two files, and now if I grep for revision and start out text, yes, I get four files, and you can see that two of them are revision 10 and two of them are revision 9 because I misspelled the word revision. That's actually a useful lesson because now I've got files that have different revision numbers. Okay.